Gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you again for this gorgeous morning that you've given to us, the sunshine and the cool air. Father, for this occasion and this opportunity and privilege and joy to gather together as people of faith, of people of God, to worship you. Father, our heart yearns to worship you, that we rejoice in your promises that you are here with us. We call upon your name. We receive your gifts. We hear the good word of the good shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep, for us. Father, I pray that this time together may be a blessing for everyone who is here, that it may edify and refresh our faith, that as we take this occasion to set aside the world and our lives, to give our praise and worship and receive your gifts during this hour, that we know that as you have so promised to be with us here, that as we then go back out into the world and to our vocations and lives that you go with us and that we continue to celebrate that glorious truth and gift of the resurrection of your Son and our Savior Jesus Christ during this Easter season and that it is in his name always and only that we pray. Alleluia, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And good morning to you, dear friends. Welcome, welcome. It's good to see you again. Another bright, beautiful uh, Sunday morning, wonderful time for worship. I uh, was praying that um, the fly found somewhere else to go and not aggravate us today, but uh, we'll see if he's still over there somewhere. But with that then, dear friends, it is good to see you, good to be here together. Uh, no better way to begin a new week and uh, love being here with you and with the Lord. So let's begin our worship. We'll sing our opening hymn, which is, and the hymns are correct, both on, your, uh, on, the, on the hymn board and in your service folder. So we should be uh, on track today. We'll, hit, we'll sing hymn number 709. <laughs>
prayer friends, please rise, and we will use Divine Service Setting 1 this morning that begins on page 151 in the front of the Lutheran Service Book. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his only son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the good shepherd, I heard. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures, He leads me beside still waters. righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I am the Good Shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, and I lay down my life for the sheep. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.
victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. For the Lamb who was slain has begun His reign. Hallelujah. This is the feast of victory for our God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have so wakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, Grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, please be seated. Thank you. Our first reading from the Holy Scriptures comes from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 4. As they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed. And the number of the men came to about 5,000. On the next day, their rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them in the midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I read from the epistle, the first epistle of St. John, chapter 3. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed 
and in truth. By this we shall know that we are of the truth and reassure our heart before him. For whenever our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and he knows everything. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he has commanded us. Whoever keeps his commandments abides in him and he in them. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our reading from the Holy Gospel comes from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me, just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ When I was a newbie pastor, fresh out of the seminary, 1989, uh, and Susan and I had received our first call. We were called to serve, and you, you know the story here, we were called to serve Grace Lutheran Church in Burke Burnett, Texas. And the situation as we were driving, moving our stuff from St. Louis, from the seminary, St. Louis to, to North Texas, that we didn't have a home, not yet. We weren't able to live in Burke Burnett yet. That would still be still a couple of years. But we signed a lease for an apartment in Wichita Falls, Texas, which is about 15 miles south of Burke Burnett. So we lived in an apartment during that time while we were getting settled and getting acclimated and getting adjusted to the ministry. And that in the apartment complex where we lived, there was a little lake close to the apartment section where we lived. And that little lake was inhabited by a flock of ducks. And I say that, that's not the correct term for a group of ducks. Anyway, group of ducks, bunch of ducks, had, had made that little lake their home. And I started a little routine. One time when we were at the grocery store, I picked up a bag of bird seeds and started to make it a daily routine to feed the ducks. Didn't take long, didn't take long that I would uh, come down the stairs, we lived upstairs in the apartment, and, and come downstairs to the little lake there, and there was, a, there was one of the ducks who was kind of the boss of the group, and he, all he had to do was just see me, and he would go, wah, 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 wah. and here they all came. Here they all came, right up to me, and yes, when they get to know you, when they get to trust you, then you can scratch their feathers and you can, you can um, scratch under their beaks and, and they, you know, they'll, they'll close their eyes, they'll be like a puppy dog with that. 
and they'll eat the seed right out of my hand. And that became our routine. They expected that, and so I, I tried to make it very faithful to go out there every day and feed the ducks. And I still remember that very much because of what we talked about last week, what we've talked about before, of how people trust us because we're trustworthy. Maybe something else that you've seen. Saw this on uh, YouTube this week. This, these, these videos about wild animals, you know, lions and elephants and bears who are cared for and who are uh, provided for by somebody who, who loved them and cared for them. And so these videos of a huge lion who sees the person that they love and runs up to them and hugs them. <laughs> the lion hugging the person who cared for them. Today being Good Shepherd Sunday, the fourth Sunday of Easter, that we read the section from John chapter 10, that Jesus who refers to himself as the Good Shepherd, that we sang in the uh, collect or in the introit of Psalm 23, I am the Good Shepherd, because he loves and cares for his sheep. He knows them all by name and they definitely know him. This is the picture that the scriptures give of the church. Of Christ, yes, as the bridegroom and the church being the bride, but also of the shepherd, the good shepherd, who also is the Lord Jesus Christ, and the sheep, you and I, all of us, because we are sinful, we are dependent upon our, uh, the Lord to provide for our needs, both our temporal needs and our spiritual needs, and that this is true for all of us, and it's true for everything that we need in this life that He provides so abundantly and graciously and lovingly, and it bespeaks of another theme that you know is, is near and dear to my heart. And this language here that John, in the epistle of John that we've been reading through these weeks of Easter, that in the epistle of John, as well as in the gospel of John that we read, he says this, he writes this, if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. The scriptures are full of examples and cases in point of where the apostles of Paul, of James and his epistle, of John here in his epistle, of Jesus himself saying that, how do we in the most tangible, graphic, real way show forth our faith, our faith in God, our faith in the Lord to such a godless world, and that is to serve and minister and care, especially for those in need. It was Monday, or Monday or Tuesday, I'm not sure which it was, earlier this week, when Gary called me and uh, maybe going either to his clinic or coming home from his clinic. Anyway, he called to tell me that there was a young family, turned out to be a young Middle East Muslim family, who were standing on the corner of 25 and 92 over here, they had a sign and they were begging for help. As it turned out, they needed a lot of help. They needed everything. They needed gas. They needed uh, a night in the hotel. They needed food, a drink. 
Uh, one of the children, they had three children, two small boys and an infant child. They needed baby supplies. They needed everything. They needed some clothing. They needed the, uh, you know, the can of the uh, baby formula. And that's, that stuff definitely is pricey. And so they needed everything because, as I heard and learned a little bit about their situation, they were running away from something. They were fleeing from somebody or some sort of danger. So they left with absolutely everything behind. They had nothing. They needed everything. I was with them about three hours to finally get them situated, get them settled. They were trying to make their way to Seattle. That was their destination. So uh, I'm praying that they made it. I'm praying that they got there, tried to do what I could to help not just take care of them here, but also to get down the road a little bit of a ways. And so that, yes, I was able to pray with them. They were very happy and very appreciative. And so uh, got hugs from everybody. And that I pray because we know we have the promise and we have the promise here in scripture. And specifically an example here in 1 John that that mom and dad, that father and mother, and those two boys, they will always remember that. And we have the promise of God through the Holy Spirit that He works when and where and how and who He pleases in those situations because of you providing for the benevolence fund that we maintain that allows us to help people in those situations. Most of the time, the situations are very, you know, fairly simple. This one was definitely much more complex and much more expensive. And I thank God that nonetheless, we were still able to do it. And so after praying with them and hugs to go around, then there is the moment when I ask them that you're squared away, everything you need is provided for, of which they acknowledged and said yes, and they thanked me and, and uh, were very appreciative, which I know that they were, and that we have his promise, the promise of the Lord, to serve and minister in those situations where they are taught in the Islamic faith that Christianity is vile and evil and that we worship more than one God because they misunderstand the Trinity, and to know that those kids, those two older boys, as well as the two parents, that there was this tall guy, didn't really know what it meant for me to be a pastor, but this tall guy who helped them in Greenfield, that we pray that the Lord will accomplish much good in that situation and in that opportunity because that's exactly what St. John is saying and writing about in his epistle. Let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. That's the ministry of the church here on earth, that we are blessed by these opportunities, which is, I believe, the most effective evangelism program, you know, evangelism program, because we always think we have to have a program, the most effective ministry evangelism that there is to not only speak about the Lord Jesus Christ and Him crucified and resurrected, but to demonstrate it. As we observe and celebrate this Sunday as Christ is the Good Shepherd, because He showed forth, He demonstrated, as we demonstrate to our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren and those who are in need even here among us, within our families, within the congregation, within the community, within the world, everywhere. Those occasions are always with us. Jesus said the poor will always be with you. That yes, we struggle with that because we ask the question, will this ever get resolved? Will it ever end? And, if, and the answer to that is no, it won't. And that we ask ourselves the question, we struggle with the realities of this day and age because we want to say that not in this country should this happen. You know, we really are as 
St. John writes and says, anyone who has the world's goods, and here in our country we certainly have our share and more of the world's goods, and so why does this happen? Well, that's a topic for another day. We can talk about that elsewhere. But nevertheless, it still is the case. It still is the commission that we have been entrusted and given by the Lord to make disciples, to show forth the goodness of God. Why? Because this is how Jesus carried out his ministry. His was definitely a hands-on ministry. The most powerful evidence, at least for me, that I simply share with you, as to Jesus demonstrating who he claimed to be, I am the way, the truth, and the life, I am the resurrection and the life, I am the good shepherd, is because he put his money where his mouth is. He not only talked the talk, he walked the walk. He healed and fed and sustained and taught thousands of people. And those people to whom he showed forth his love and his almighty omnipotence and his benevolence toward them were the people, the impetus who from the disciples and from the small group of which we read here in Acts, some 5,000 men who heard him and who believed or who heard Peter and who believed and who shared and the gospel went forth. Dear friends, we as the people of God, as the church, and yes, let me be so bold as to say specifically the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod, we have a synodical organization, a synodical department that is called LCMS World Relief and Human Care. That what we do here locally, we also do internationally. And let me give you just a case in point of something brand new, brand new, that is an opportunity for young people, and I don't think just necessarily young people, but primarily young people, that in Casper, Wyoming, I've never been to Casper, Wyoming. I might now have a good reason to go. In Casper, Wyoming, there is a new Lutheran or Luther classical college. And its purpose is to be a college that exclusively teaches and inculcates the Lutheran Christian faith in the hearts and minds and souls of young people as well as to get an accredited education. It is truly a breath of fresh air. It is a bold expression in this godless world that we live in and certainly the godless society that we live in that a brand new college is coming to pass, having their first academic year in the fall of 2025. Keep it in your prayers. If you want to know more about it, I'll let you know. And they see their ministry in bringing up and raising up a group of dedicated Lutheran Christians to show forth their faith, to show forth Christ in their lives, whatever their vocations may be, seeing every opportunity and every vocation and every station in life as an opportunity, as a privilege to show forth Christ and Him crucified and resurrected in the world, in their own sphere of life of which we all have. And how wonderful and incredible that is. What an incredible blessing and, and the blessing that that will be not only to those who go to this new college, but for the people whose lives they will touch when they then from that place go back out into the world and serve. This is how especially, I believe, especially in this godless day and age in which we live, in what the sociologists are telling us they call the post-Christian era, where we are confronted in this time, in this day and age in our society, where we speak to people, both young and old, who truly, genuinely, and sincerely, as amazing as it is, it blew my mind when this first happened to me, when you speak about the Lord Jesus Christ, and you know we, we speak Christianese, we know the lingo, we know the language, we know who Jesus is, and, we, and we, maybe you know, we can get accustomed to that, and we can speak so candidly and so freely that when we're confronted with somebody who absolutely has no idea what you're talking about, 
Because there was a time, for those of you who are older like me, there was a time after World War II and in the 50s and 60s where everybody went to church. It was just, it was just part of the daily or the weekly routine. And that all the kids went to Sunday school and all the kids went to confirmation. And, and so this was, this was just, you know, within our homes and within our lives. Not anymore. It really is true. Not anymore. So we are now very much in a mission field, very much similar to our, our ancestors who came, who were faced with that exact same situation that we are confronted with now. What do we say? to somebody who ha doesn't have a clue what you're talking about. And for us who recognize that in our sinfulness, and that in our sinfulness, yes, that we preach and that we live both the law and the gospel, the law that accuses us of our sin, reminds us that the very first thing we do in the worship service is confess our sin and receive forgiveness, thanks be to God, that we are confronted by and that we seek to serve not just people who don't know but who people who don't know the seriousness and the gravity of their sin and who need to hear that the sinfulness of our lives accuses it condemns it brings about the anger and wrath of god and yet, even in the midst of that, we have this account, this image today of the Lord Jesus Christ as the Good Shepherd who saves his life or who gives his life for the sheep. Sheep who rebel, who disobey, who do not believe, who seek their own way. And what happens every time? they get lost and that because of that Christ as the Good Shepherd leaves the 99 behind and goes looking for the sheep who is lost until he finds it beautiful passage that's in Luke chapter 15 until he finds it and brings it back as he has done for us keep that young Middle East family in your prayers that the Lord will accomplish his good and gracious purposes in their lives as he does in the lives of people all over the world pray for the new Luther Classical College in Casper Wyoming pray for the ministry of our synod pray for the church at large pray for this fallen, warring, godless, sinful, wicked world, that we may be, that you are, dear friends, the very word, the very witness that shows forth by your lies, your faith, your generosity, your kindness, your benevolence, that truly does touch and change lives, bringing godless people to faith, or more correctly to say, godless people who are being brought to faith in the glorified and resurrected Savior, Jesus Christ. Alleluia, dear friends. Alleluia. Amen. Amen. God and Heavenly Father, 
Lord, thank you, thank you for the privilege, the opportunities that you give to us to serve and minister to the stranger as well as to those who are brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, we know that we live in a godless world. We live in a world that is impoverished. Father, you have blessed us abundantly in this land that we have received and that we have our generous goods of the world to give, to use, to benefit others who are in need, and in doing so to show forth Christ in our words and our deeds that they too may come to know Him as we know Him, as Lord and Savior lived crucified and resurrected. Father, we ask for your special blessings to be with those on our prayer list to be with Dennis Subert and Alex Mitchell, George Beeman and Kevin Hall, Therald Arterburn, Ted Wallace, Karen Schulteis, Brad Mueller, Keith Mueller, Joan Newell, Lois Hoadley, Linda Weber, Deb Mangles, Dave Barker, Kent Sin, Dean Wiggins, Lori Harvey, Lori Wallace, Nita Kester, George Queck, Dora Sanborn, Brian Beeman, Jerry and Kathy Smuck, and with Devin Jackson in Houston. Father, we pray for these and all others who we know in our own lives, in our hearts, and in our sphere of influence that you would care for and provide and heal and to know that you accomplish your good and gracious purposes through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. That it is in his name that we thank you and pray to you and look forward to receiving your blessed gift of word, of, of sacrament, of body and blood. Alleluia. Amen. And dear friends, the service of the sacrament begins on page 160. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right and salutary, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them as well and said, Drink from this cup, all of you, for this is the New Testament which is in my blood and is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven. True blood, your Lord and Savior. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear sisters in Christ, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven and is given for you. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. For this is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Given and shed the remission of your sins. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. <coughs> Dear
dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which is the bread of heaven. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the body of Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. For this is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Given and shed for the remission of your sins. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Dear friends, welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat, for this is the true body of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptism. Amen. Amen. Take and eat the body of Christ. Our Lord's precious body and blood always strengthen you and keep you in that one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Your sins are forgiven. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Now may the true body and the true blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the one true faith to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Dear friends, our closing hymn is number 525. Please, please be seated. Thank you. Oh. 